parents saying to us, well, you're obviously very tired because you know we were like losing our cool, you know, where it's like, you can't raise them with a newborn. You can't be like, okay, I know what's going yeah. on right now. You're just overly tired. So just like close your eyes. It's going to be fine. Yeah. You know? And you have to force them. Right, right. Yeah, you have to trick them into like sleeping. Yeah, it is an interesting experience. And I, I definitely have a newfound respect for parents everywhere, including mine, by the way. <laughs> well, Apparently, good. I was a great baby. My brother, though, wasn't. He was, I was going to say a bad word, but yeah. I, you know, I, I haven't heard anything particularly bad about myself, but I'm also an only child. So, I mean, my parents just, they don't have anything to compare it to. You were the yeah. best one, Sarah. We're never having another child because you <laughs> that's broke the Kind of, yeah. 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 That's Once the I issue. got old We're enough thinking... to hear the whole story, that's kind of what it was. Like, mm, we just didn't want to do that again. But, well, that's where we are now. We're like... <laughs> Well, we would like to have another one so that they can at least play together. Sure, and all yeah, of, that. of course. It's like, holy poop, we don't want to do that again. Like, ask me now. I'm, I do. I will never have another kid if if I have to choose now. Right. So, um, right. Yeah, but we'll see. We're, yeah, will. give it six months. That's what people say. It's yeah. hard to believe from here that in six months i will think differently uh, what about you what do you think roger it no it will change in six months all the things you're complaining about right now will go away but you'll have new things you're going to be complaining about sure so, are they gonna but will it lead you to think oh i can have another one uh yeah you know it it, it I'll, I'll be honest the further you get away from the initial birth mm -hmm. the more you're less opposed to having another one like when you're when you come out right, right after um, the birth and like the initial six months, you're like, ah, how can anyone deal with this? Give it yeah. a year, and it starts to <laughs> it, you start to like, uh, might not be such a. After how two years, you're like, oh, yeah. how old is Ellie? <laughs> she is three. So. He's okay. Uh, okay, so we, we are going to get started. We're going to get started. So I am going to start oh, recording. How about that? Yep. How'd that happen? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit record, point at you, Sarah. Okay. You start talking, and then I'll play the music. Got it. <clears throat> Daily Tech News Show is powered by you. To find out more, head to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. Tech News for Tuesday, March 13th, 2018. From Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. And from the house that never sleeps, but not for party reasons, I'm Patrick Beja in Helsinki. <gasps> oh, Patrick, you were not with us last week because you've got a newborn who is disrupting your lifestyle. Sorry to hear that. Right. Yeah, again, who knew? Who knew? <laughs> babies apparently take a. If a huge only somebody would tell food. us. Yeah, no one you know, how much babies really kind of you know cramp your lifestyle. Speaking of lifestyles, Tom Merritt is on his way back from South by Southwest. He'll be with us tomorrow, but we're gonna hold down the fort today. Um, especially because we have Roger Chang with us as always. Roger, how's it going? It's going well, and I, I can tell you from firsthand experience, babies can cramp your style, but what you do is you develop a whole new style. Okay. All There's right. Yeah. Style that doesn't involve sleeping. It's that whole they've ruined your life, but your new life is pretty good too. <laughs> uh, we're we're not quite there yet. I'm sure we will get there. At some point. <laughs> Give it six months. Give it six <laughs> months. All right. Uh, getting back into tech news. Let's start with a few tech things that you should know. The White House issued a statement Monday that President Trump has nixed Broadcom's proposed buyout of Qualcomm, citing national security concerns. Both companies were ordered to immediately abandon the proposed deal. Also, the order prohibits all 15 of Broadcom's proposed candidates for Qualcomm's board from standing for election. Hmm. I guess that's that. That's that. Fitbit announced new wearables, the Fitbit Versa and the Ace, both available for pre-order today. The Versa runs the upcoming Fitbit OS 2.0 and starts at 200 bucks. The Fitbit Ace is the company's first wearable for kids and will hit retail stores in Q2 2018 for $100. Uh, 
shares. Trying to get some market share back from Apple. Speaking of Apple, the company announced its WWDC dates for the year. Its annual developer conference is expected to include details on iOS 12, Mac OS 10.14, Watch OS 5, and TV OS 12. We're actually at TVOS 12, I guess so. WWDC 2018 will run from June 4th through the 8th and take place in San Jose, California for the second year in a row. TVOS um, 12? Really? Okay, yeah, I guess. That, like, that 12? Mm, doesn't sound right to me. Let's just say it doesn't sound right so that the people who know and who are listening who are like, it's not TVOS 12, will think, you know, we, we can say, Oh, between. Yeah, we can say something seemed fishy to us as well. <laughs> Feedback at Daily Tech News Show if you have the answer. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about, well, we got some security concerns, Patrick, don't we? Mm -hmm. CTS Labs, a security company based in Israel, said Tuesday its researchers found 13 critical security vulnerabilities that would let uh, attackers access data stores on, stored on AMD's Ryzen and Epic processors and be able to install malware on them. AMD's Ryzen chips power desktops and laptop computers, while Epic processors are found in servers. The researchers gave AMD less than 24 hours to respond before publishing the report, even though standard vulnerability disclosure calls for 90 days notice, so companies have time to address flaws. When Spectre and Meltdown security flaws that affect Intel chips were announced in January, AMD said it was not. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, sorry. AMD said it was not affected because of its chips architecture differences. Well, okay. So my first of all, I called it EPYC because I've never heard Epic pronounced out loud before, which makes a lot <laughs> more sense. Uh, that wasn't headlines this morning for anybody who chuckled at me. Also, you know, if you're supposed to give a company 90 days notice, and I understand that because if you're, you know, giving them vulnerabilities that that the company has to research and you know figure out the right course of action, you're not going to be able to do that in 24 hours, probably. What do you think is the rush here? So um, there, there's two, thing I, two things I can see. First, maybe 90 days wouldn't have been enough anyway to develop a software fix, maybe. But it certainly seems like CTS Labs wanted to get the thing out really quickly to get some publicity out of it. Maybe mm. it's not the case, but that's how I read it. The American Civil Liberties Union, or the ACLU, has filed a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit against the TSA in an effort to extract more info about procedures and motivations. Specifically, the ACLU wants to know why the TSA launched stricter screening procedures for domestic passengers' electronic devices last year, how the TSA records its findings, what equipment the TSA is using to search phones and laptops in some cases, and also what kind of training the officers who conduct these searches get. This is the second Freedom of Information Act that ACU has filed. The first attempt was in December of 2017. And before the show, Patrick, I was like, when's the last time you were in a, you know, TSA line, you know, coming in and out of the U.S.? Because it's true uh, that the policies have changed. And the reason that I know this is because I go through security with a bunch of podcasting equipment and every time, you know, they're like, what are these? Do you have guns in here? You know, because it all looks sort of weird in the x-ray. Mm -hmm. But um, the last couple of times after the first of the year, um, you know, I was sort of like warned, like, if you pack it this way, it's going to be a real hassle for you because we have to check everything that's bigger than a cell phone at this point, you know, like personally check it. I mean, that happened overnight. I, you know, I, w I didn't get any warning beforehand. Not that I would have. I don't know how I would have. But I also asked a few of the agents, which, you know, depending on, you know, who you get, they're either friendly and, you know, want, want to talk about these things or, or not. But I, nobody could ever give me any reason. They were like, just the new rules. Mm. Yeah, it seems like there's something happening and maybe there is some secret stuff that they can't really talk about in there. But I think in general, whether or not you're, you know, uh, uh, pro or against these things, it's good that we have organizations that can ask and the freedom of information act is there for a reason so at least you know you can find out what's happening and if you know there's reasons that they can't discuss then they can say well we can't really say so yeah we'll see i, I mean it's always good to have you know balance of power in these things absolutely Kitty Hawk, the flying taxi company funded by Google co-founder Larry Page and CEO 
and CEO'd by Google X founding director Sebastian Thurn, launched Cora, a vertical takeoff and landing VTOL personal copter, <laughs> personal copter drone hybrid that will carry one passenger. Cora will be launched in New Zealand, which is uh, ideal given the sparse population and fewer flight restrictions. Cora has a 36 feet, that's the feet symbol, right? That's right, not, yeah. Right, yeah. so 36 <laughs> feet. Also, 36 inch wingspan would be weird, uh, would be <laughs> realistic. Yeah, like with, kind of problematic to carry a uh, mm -hmm. human. Uh, with 12 rotors and is battery powered. It can fly up to 62 miles and carry one or two passengers. This is Cora with a C, not to be confused, of course, with Cora, where you ask questions online. Um, totally different. I love this. You know, the idea of, well, especially, you know, we, we sort of call it like the sort of copter drone hybrid. What is it? No one knows yet. It's a different class. But, you know, the beauty of helicopters, we have a lot of them out where I live because there's always uh, the Coast Guard uh, patrolling the beach. But, you know, you just go up. You don't need a runway. You don't need all this stuff going on. So the idea that New Zealand not only has some land um, where the company can test a lot of this stuff, Kitty Hawk is a great name, by the way, but also <laughs> fewer flight restrictions so that the company's like, hey, we got to, you know, we got to do some tests here. And if there are other companies that there's just a lot more red tape involved. Um, makes a lot of sense to me. Carrying two passengers uh, at most feels limiting i and maybe it's because i've just been hearing so much about like i don't know the boring company's tunnel project and you know taking a bunch of people you know various distances you know in, in a in a big group sort of in a public transportation way um but at the same time hey if you don't need to build an airport for your new quad drone whatever thing is going on what better place than new zealand yeah, and I think the two people might seem a little bit limiting, but it's also it's not like a, a, a plane; it's a taxi type thing. So most most of the time, it's probably okay to only have two people. Uh, New Zealand obviously is ideal for this. It's not going to be working in very urban environment, I, I'm guessing. Um, and it's also a great uh, kind of publicity stunt for New Zealand. One thing to keep in mind is that we've seen some announcements like this. Um, uh, notably in some Arab Gulf uh, uh, countries, I think it was Saudi Arabia, maybe it was Dubai, um, that they would start the testing. The other day was, yeah, they were doing right. another test as they well. They would start testing it after a few months and it never happened. Uh, maybe this one is a little bit more serious, but um, it, it's kind of exciting. Um, we'll see how it develops. Exactly. I mean, Larry Page and the guy who started Google X Labs. I mean, it's... <laughs> Seems probably like, serious people. Like a couple of people who take this thing seriously and probably mm -hmm. put together a good project. Yeah. Can't wait to get on one of those drone copter verticals Thanks. thingies. Right. Axios reports that Facebook is getting ready to launch a news section for its watch, not like a wristwatch, mm -hmm. but as in watch video platform. And sources wow. say the company is testing different video partnerships with around 10 different publishers. Campbell Brown, head of news partnerships for Facebook, said in a statement to Axios that timely news video is the latest step in our strategy to make targeted investments in new types of programming on Facebook Watch. As part of our broader effort to support quality news on Facebook, we plan to meet with a wide range of potential partners to develop, learn, and innovate on news programming tailored to succeed in a social environment. I've got a few folks who work in... Um, kind of stuff that we work in, you know, Patrick and Roger and I and Tom, and have, have done some tests on Facebook Watch. And I've sort of been like, just sitting back waiting to understand what they are doing with the platform. Patrick, do you have any ideas about this? Uh, I don't think I've even, you know, I'm not a big Facebook user. I don't think I've ever even encountered face, Facebook Watch. So I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but it's very interesting that Facebook would be getting into the business of delivering news, especially, yeah. you know, given the cir circumstances uh, of, you know, the surrounding media and social networks and manipulation and all of that. Um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm not sure if this maybe was something that was initiated a while ago and uh, or maybe they want to have only vetted sources and that's a way of legitimizing themselves. I'm not sure. 
Well, I think, you know, Facebook and this sort of plays into Apple's news yesterday of buying texture, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because Apple said, hey, you know, we want the, these are quality news sources. They right. do what they do very well. These are magazines and, and you know, we we want to give them a platform to, to, to remain, uh, you know, a, a, a well-produced product. It seems like what Facebook is doing is saying, okay, well, we're going to get a lot of the stuff out of the newsfeed because it's cluttering things up anyway. We've got a fake news problem. That's, you know, sort of its own issue. And uh, we have to figure out how publishers can monetize content that we have deemed quality and, you know, vetted on some level. If we if we bundle it into another tab of some kind, let's call it the, you know, the watch experience. Um and I don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but they have been testing it on some level. And I can see where it would behoove Facebook to keep it all in one place to just keep better track of it, especially mm. because they've had such a PR nightmare uh, over the last couple of years about uh, how information spreads and how, you know, the sharing of it uh, as nice as that is organically ends up being really problematic as far as what's 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 true and what isn't hmm. so have the original facebook on one tab and the other stuff on another but then can't you share one in the other it's like ah, i don't know yet and there's a whole monetization thing too i'm sure mm -hmm. that like if yeah. you you know if you're going to section it if out then people, that that becomes uh, yeah. a lot I'm easier sure to are, are going to say dude we have to be able to share stuff there so yeah know. Um, fitness tracking app Strava said uh, starting on Tuesday, it will restrict access to an online map showing user exercise routes and remove other data. In January, data researchers found Strava's heat, heat, map, um, heat map revealed military posts and other sensitive sites. Strava CEO James Corliss said he didn't know which data would be removed. Corliss added that although he has been in contact with defense and intelligence officials, they did not ask him to remove the map. Makes sense. They would probably, those people would probably uh, take up that issue with the people sharing the data rather than the app itself. It's interesting that the CEO of Strava says, I don't know what data is going to be removed. <laughs> Nobody from the military asked me to remove it, but we're going to go ahead and do that anyway. Well, I mean, clearly that was not a great story to have surround your app. So I think they have to do right. something and they know they have to manage some of the data. Maybe they don't know exactly how and, and what because they want to make sure they do it right. So it takes time to evaluate these things. I, I think it's probably the right move for them, I would suppose. Well, what, uh, you know, you mentioned before we started the show that uh, you will be moving to a new house soon. And what mm -hmm. comes with that is packing, unpacking, and sometimes assembling new furniture, <laughs> word furniture that you had to disassemble so you could move it. So we're going to go into our discussion story now. And that is the idea that IKEA, known for affordable but sometimes confusing furniture to build from scratch, uh, announced this morning that it's rolling out a new TaskRabbit at home assembly service in select US markets where TaskRabbit is available and in six stores in New York and San Francisco retail stores. IKEA acquired TaskRabbit back in September of 2017 Kind of, you know, this is kind of expected. You figure if they're going to buy TaskRabbit, this is probably going to be the next phase of this, but we're seeing it for the first time. So. The new TaskRabbit assembly service will be offered online and in store with furniture assembly starting at $36. So, you know, you buy a new dresser, it comes in pieces, you know, you could, you could put it together yourself, you could pay $36 and not have to deal with it. Fee will be based on a flat rate per uh, time of item, won't include some IKEA products like kitchens and bathrooms that require a little bit more assembly. Retailers US website, IKEAUSA.com has been updated so that online shoppers will be able to see beforehand if at-home assembly is available in their area for the selected product and location. A lot of the stuff is, is centered in California where TaskRabbit uh, was headquartered before Ikea bought it. Patrick, I don't know when the last time you bought anything from Ikea was, but I actually stopped buying things from Ikea because it was so, the proprietary everything about it was not rocket science, but such a hassle that I felt like the cost savings were no longer worth it for me. <laughs> well, I mean, Ikea is not the most difficult thing to put together. I've seen other stores that do it a lot less well, 
and maybe that's my uh you know nordic pride speaking because ikea is obviously a very uh sure. proud store but that being said I think it's kind of a, a no-brainer that they should offer this kind of service. And they kind of have, I don't know if it's not the case in the U.S., but in, in Paris, uh, in Europe, you can ask, you know, for a service to, to put together the thing at the store. But it's kind of a third-party thing, and they have to contact you, and it's usually kind of expensive. It's, very, it's always been very strange to me why IKEA didn't get into that business to begin with, maybe because the margins are thin and people don't want to pay too much and they want to do it anyway themselves. So, but given how convenient things are everywhere now and how uh, uh, easy you have to make your customer's life in order for them to come back to you, it's surprising that IKEA didn't start doing it before. Uh, they bought TaskRabbit in 2017 uh, in September And already I thought at that point that was a little bit late. And this seems, if anything, it seems a little bit timid to me. It seems a little bit, you know, too slow, even now that they're rolling it out. Well, okay. So uh, TaskRabbit, again, uh, the, the startup started in San Francisco. So there were a lot of folks who used TaskRabbits, uh, the couriers, for, for a variety of reasons. Yeah, I was talking to Roger before the show started. It's like a lot of friends would hire somebody to like clean up after a big house party, you know, or a Super Bowl party or something, or uh, put together Ikea furniture. That was a really big one. Or various kind of like get something from point A to point B. So I think in certain markets, Ikea is like, okay, well, we could hire all these people ourselves, but the, there's this whole infrastructure that already exists. And at least would be um, sure the you know ramping up for other people in other markets to get used to this will you know take some scaling. But in certain markets, particularly the Bay Area, people are already used to this. So again, it's like it's the typical well, let's acquire a company rather than recreate it ourselves. Well, what's yeah. interesting is that they did bring this company in house. Typically, and 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 not unlike what you were mentioning, uh, Patrick, Home Depot, Lowe's. If you want to buy appliances and have them installed, they do it through a third party that the company Lowe's or Home Depot manages. They they pair you up with a third party individual. I need to put a new washer dryer. We'll install it. We'll blah, blah, blah. We'll add all these fees. What's interesting is they took kind of a page out of the Best Buy model. Geek Squad, something that everyone knows, if at least in, in North America, is part of a is part of Best Buy that comes to your house to install that brand new HD TV, uh, as long as well as your Internet of Things devices and all the and the rest of it. Now, the thing is, Geek Squad back in 1994 was an independent company. It was bought in like the early 2000s and 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 brought into Best Buy. And essentially, this is what IKEA is doing. It's taking this out outside third party. Uh, provider of this service and they're bringing it in and it might be of a case where they basically want to add value to their uh you know plethora of products without necessarily coming out with a whole new line or style of furniture right so we don't necessarily have to break our existing model to see if we can add additional revenue with another model on top of it yeah i guess it does make sense that it's easier to do it like this but i still think it's a little bit Um, you know, they should have done this a while ago. I don't know if it's the case in, in the US, but for the longest time, it was really difficult to order stuff online from IKEA because they wanted to get you to the store, probably to get you to, you know, go through that entire maze and probably pick up stuff you didn't really need because you saw them there. But it took them a really long time to get to the web. It took, I mean, it, it seems to me like the pace of an incumbent that isn't feeling threatened by newcomers and it's it's just surprising that um you know they it, and, and it's true that uh, uh, competition would need to have uh, uh stores that ikea already has in place and they have a, a position of power but it is uh inconvenient in many ways and as you said sarah you you stopped going there because it's like oh that's just uh, too much of a hassle Why have they not done this before? Um, that's what I'm wondering. And why it, isn't, you know. It, it could very well be what you were just saying. It's an incumbent company. They have right. a huge market share. It works for them. Why risk 
going out to something that isn't that that might be new and might you know might have a future but not necessarily tested right they they're they're essentially sticking their big toe in the swimming pool before they you know find out you know before they jump all in to make sure the the temperature of the water is right um and so this could very well be it this is because like okay that there is obviously a market for it people have been paying for this service for a couple of years now let's just bring it in we'll, we'll acquire the company and that way we don't necessarily have to risk uh by being the first one in but be due to our large scale we can we can be sure we're the largest when we jump in mm. and so therefore we let other people take the risk we minimize the risk to ourselves but we can still benefit even though if we have to pay a, a initial premium on on acquiring the service in the long run it just you know it, it, uh, it increases our bottom line I can't believe Keek Squad started in 1994. <laughs> I didn't even know Best Buy was around in 1994. That's what happens when you're from a small town. All right. Well, we will revisit this topic as updates come in. But thanks to everybody who gives us story ideas, especially those who participate in our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. And of course, we have a Facebook group as well. You're a Facebook person. Hang out with us there. Facebook.com slash groups slash Daily Tech News Show. Got an email from Mike. Uh, this is in response to, again, the, our story from yesterday that Apple bought Texture, uh, which was originally called Next Issue. Now, I had the uh, iPad app when it was Next Issue, so I am familiar with, with its offering, although I haven't used it regularly in a couple of years. Mike says, I particularly like Zinio for my digital fix. It offers boutique specialty magazines where Texture only offers the common newsstand varieties. My favorite magazine that isn't offered in either of these services is when Ro Rolling Stone magazine offered their own digital version. It's now discontinued, but it had multimedia links embedded. It was really cool. They had their music picks, and then the link would give a small audio sample. Movie picks would show a trailer. It was an enriching experience. I believe that their own digital version went by the wayside because of copyright issues with media companies. And don't believe it was server issues because the links were fed from SoundCloud and YouTube. So... This is actually the reason that I have always liked iPad offerings. And yes, I I I can't I you know I can't deny that I'm I'm not reading any particular magazine multimedia version on uh, texture or otherwise these days. But that was the beauty of the iPad app, you know, in in the beginning. It's also sort of a weird way that the web apps of a lot of these publishers also annoy us because there's all this multimedia where we want it all stripped down, or at least for me. Patrick, how much uh, you know digital magazines are you um, consuming, if any? I'm kind of like uh, the digital version of Rolling Stone magazine in my uh, <laughs> the way I evolved. Initially, I was like, oh my god, this is so awesome. You can do this and that. Look at that. It's the future. And obviously, everyone was annoyed very quickly. And we just want text. And even when there's a video, we're a little bit bothered by it. What I do use, however, is a service called Marvel Unlimited, which is a subscription service which gives you access to all of Marvel's comics uh, from six months and older, six months ago and older, um, in digital form. It's very handy because we don't have them here in France, so not all of them at least, so we can just uh, I could just get them on my iPad, uh, but also some of them come with, you know, some um, uh, digitized version, anima not animated, but they zoom into the right portion of the thing and you can read it more easily uh, on, a, on a screen. That's the one use I would say I am very happy with um, for transitioning paper to digital, and half of it has to do with availability. As aside from that, I have to admit, I don't use very many... Um, digital magazines. Maybe it's because I just haven't found the right ones yet. I think that also, you know, I, I mentioned on the show yesterday, like, hey, as long as Apple's making iPads, they're going to want stuff like this because the, mm. the iPad is the perfect experience to to consume, you know, a digital um, magazine or, or newspaper or something that has a lot of multimedia uh, qualities. We also know that Apple, well, this, these are sources that, that say so, but is trying to revamp its whole newsstand experience. So, the, you know, again, to be able to acquire a company that has a lot of names that people know for nine ninety nine a month, I believe it is for about two hundred magazines. You know, it's it's a it's a Netflix of magazines for some people. That's going to be super worth it. 
you know thinking of it like that i might be interested you know i i if it's if it's like just throw everything in 10 bucks a month fine i'll get it <laughs> right. the reluctance yeah person. it's like okay if you <laughs> insist <laughs> if you insist <laughs> uh, well, thanks to Mike for writing in. Thanks to everybody who wrote in. By the way, we're going to do a mailbag episode on Friday. So, you know, if anybody's been writing us and says, well, you don't get to the show, we have a whole other show designed just for that. So stay tuned. More details later. Thanks also to Patrick Beja, who is a new father, very sleep deprived, but yet brings the noise every week. Thank you, Patrick. What's been going on with you? Um, well, you know, I still do almost all of my podcasts, so it's it hasn't been easy, but uh, we've been keeping the schedule. Um, I would recommend today you check out Pixels. It's a show about video games, and uh, we talk about video games news from the uh, past couple of weeks or so. You can check it out on your podcast app. Just look for Pixels, and you'll subscribe, and you'll be happy. It's guaranteed, or we give you your money back, and it's free. Ooh. All right. Hey, you know, we got to lose. Uh, thanks also to all of our patrons. If you're looking to support the show, you have lots of options. Dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. It's all the ways you can figure out how best to support our efforts here. And thanks especially to our patrons. If you want to thank uh, you know, what one of the people who, you know, pays at least more than a dollar a month, please do so. Maybe that's you put, pat yourself on the back. Patreon.com slash DTNS is how you can learn more about that. And also all the like cool extra exclusives that, that, that our patrons get. Um, and you know, we, we, we try to make it worth everybody's well. So thank you to everybody who supports Thank you in advance to those who will support us tomorrow. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Please write us, give us feedback, ask us questions. We are live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 21.30 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Scott Johnson with us tomorrow. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> and Tom Merritt will also be with us. And I know Tom Merritt is watching slash listening right now. Hi, Tom. Huh? He's listening now? I'm positive. Tom is omnipresent. Um, well, I am going to be no present because the baby has basically not stopped crying. So I'm going to go leave my poor wife right um, now. Please do um, go with God. And we didn't hear any crying, if that matters. Oh, that's, yeah, that's what I was uh, guessing. But I certainly did. All and, right. uh, and, and, and a wonderful night's sleep to you and yours, Patrick. Thanks for being Thank with you. us. Many hugs. <laughs> Thank you. See you next week. Doodle do 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 all right. Uh, what do we want to call it? Okay. Uh, uh, show, Showbot.chatrealm.net. We've uh, got... Ooh, I like this one. Ikea. I know every assembler. Well, I don't get, get that. You know, I know every... Is, assemblers uh, or... Yeah, assembler. Assembly? Like it, it, assembler programming, assembly programming oh, language. Oh, okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. You're... Um, which is like the lowest level you can write before you move into higher level. Understand right? programming spurg. Uh, Let's see what else we got. Um, core of the flying taxi. IKEA task rabbits making you not angry. Sending up furniture since 2018. <laughs> That's good. It's kind of long. Good though. Um, core in the sky with VTO. Get it like. Uh, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. I do. Good stuff. Car in the Sky with VTR. Um, All right. I'll go ahead and vote on that one. Right. Yeah.
uh, do the magic with the rest of the stuff, the shoe, the show, the shoe show. Here, let me put this in here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I, I knew Tom was there. I saw, I, I saw his little face in the circle show up in our Google Docs. I actually didn't, so, so. but, you know, I just assume Tom is there. You know, I realize that I meant to add um, Movie Pass update. Uh, I talked about it on headlines this morning, but we didn't talk about it on the show today. I mean, there's not much to it, but it is an update. I thought I did earlier. Yes. Maybe I just never brought it up from for consideration. So yeah, as far as um, the title goes, I know every assembler is good. Okay. Um, I also like Core on the Sky with VTOL. It's funny. Yeah, put this in here for me. Sorry, I'm just moving my audio files over so I can do yep. the levelating and the crunching. Oh, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Computer. Computer in the sky with millions of my money. I wish I had millions, not just the hundreds. No, uh, I just want to win the lottery. You know what? I had this conversation with someone we both know about like oh you don't want to win it would be a bad thing it's like no i want to no, win, win and i want to see firsthand how difficult it would truly be oh yeah no let let me deal with the like social fallout of it i'm ready yeah. to take on this this, this if this, i need this. to build them out i will <laughs> right am i gonna lose all my friends yet pay taxes can do yeah. No, I, I, I often think like, because whenever people win the lottery, you know, it's like, you know, every so often, you know, you'll hear a story where it's, you know, someone who's just like, I just can't believe I won. Wow. I'm just going to, you know, pay off my house and I guess I'll quit my job. And, you know, yeah, you know, just sort of like this incredulous sort of what happens. I just want to know what that feels like. Yeah, I want, just want, I want to like want. be holding it and be like, wait a second. I think I just won like $80 million. Who do I call first? Like, how does this all work? Like, do I like hide yeah, like, the closet for a while? Yeah. Like, you know, are you worried like kind of Willy Wonka style that somebody's going to take the lottery ticket and it won't be yours anymore? I mean, there's a, there's a lot. There's a lot that goes into that. It's uh, I'm wondering if it's not unlike, um, you know, like, do you do you need to get like oftentimes I've heard you need to get a lawyer. It's like, why? Lawyers cost money. They're not known for investing your money. What does the lawyer right. do automatically? Is that just to build you a nice watertight, you can't take my money from me because I want it thing? I've always I've always been curious. I about don't that. know. Yeah. I mean, I have no idea. There's probably a really good reason that when you win the lottery, you need a lawyer immediately, but I don't know what it is. Somebody who's won the lottery, write in, please. Let us know how this all I mean, works and who won. you called first. I would call my mother and I'd be like, okay. Now, are you sitting down? Are you driving? Are you going to have a heart attack? Like, this is a big deal. Um, but I don't, you know, like, what What would be the reaction of me being like, so, so I won the lottery. Like, I, I can't, I just can't imagine what the reaction would be of anybody I would tell. They would just be like, that's a dumb joke. I mean, like, maybe you wouldn't tell, I mean, maybe this is the social cost that everyone warns you about. You just don't, you, yeah. I could live with it, I think. I think <laughs> I oh, don't know. I say that gladly. now. Yeah. I mean, like if you friends are collateral, you know, I won the lottery. You know, money will get you new friends. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's so bad. I do. I mean, hey, money doesn't buy happiness or class, as Luann Delaseps of Real House of Wives of New York's would tell you. It's a, it's, you know, it's a given. Like it's almost given. nobody will understand that, but a few of you will, I'm sure. But it does um, uncomplicate a lot of things that, yes. you know. Student loans, one of the big complications you want to uncomplicate. Student loans, mortgages, oh, uh, you know, yeah. credit card, yeah. like all sorts of things. 
You know, this is the thing. I wouldn't go out and suddenly buy like a mansion or or like, you know, a fleet of cars or go crazy and like hire Pitbull and Shakira and, and who else to, sh- to show up for like a, a party, like pool party in my honor. Right. Unlike no, other I- lottery winners, you're not calling Pitbull on speed dial and being like, no. it's party time. Right. Um, <laughs> I would, though, I would pay off all my bills and I would start a business. That's what I would do. What would the business be? Have you thought about that? Consulting to other lottery winners about how to spend ah, on how to do it right, and then self help books. How, like, basically, be a real, be a real snot about it. Write a bunch of self help books. How to win books. the lottery? Like the lottery didn't change me. You need to change yourself, right? And then a bunch of other like things, you know, from a from a position of entitlement. I think it'd go over real well. I, yeah, I don't know what I would do. I think I'd be so afraid to fall into the trap of, oh, you know, she won the lottery and she bought herself a Lamborghini and, you know, five years later she was destitute again. I'd be so worried about any big purchase that I would just sort of like sit on it for a while. I don't know. I mean, I, well, you know, I've known people who've won casino uh, payouts. Like they won like three, four million dollars and they were pretty well, much out of the money in five years. <gasps> Because they would buy like a bunch of things they didn't read. Like, oh, I have three homes. Like, I bought myself a house, my mother right. a house, my sister. It's like, you know, after a while, that money goes pretty quick. And probably, you know, again, don't have any personal experience with this, but winning the lottery or, yeah, getting, you know, winning it big at a casino or whatever. It's like, that's the kind of money where you're like, I didn't. You know, I didn't expect to have this anyway, so it's like more fun money because um, I was already living my life besides, you know, before this happened. So, yeah, like buying that like fancy car or big house or, you know, that's the sort of thing you probably see more of when people get a huge windfall that they didn't expect. Now, let me ask you, if you were at a job that, say, you weren't entirely happy with, but you weren't necessarily... Uh, so unhappy that you would quit and you won like a lottery, like a, bi- a big chunk of change. Would you go in with like and totally be like a jerk or would you just like quit? Well, I would be like, what's the point of being a jerk? Well, no, not like jerk to everyone, but like, you know, saying like, no, I'm not going to do this because it's a bad idea. You know, like oh, you'd be a little more, you like would be finally a little more outspoken. You have the freedom to, you know, say what you were really thinking this whole time. I don't know. That's what that's one of my fantasies. I don't know. <laughs> Not with this job, but with with the previous job. <laughs> There's some movies that have some really great scenes in there um, that do just that. Uh, I don't know. I guess it would depend on how invested I was in the company in the first place. Mm. There are definitely a lot of companies where I've been like, I would just ghost on out of here. You'll never see me again. Best of luck. And there are others where I might be like, well. <laughs> Before I go, <laughs> now that you have newfound respect for me as a rich person, let me tell you what I really think. <laughs> I don't know. See, I, I don't know. I mean, those are my fantasies. My fantasies isn't spending a wad of cash. It's like being like having the freedom to kind of speak freely. Sure. Well, Without, I don't blame you. Know, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's the kind of person I am. I like revenge movies, if you can't tell. Mm. Ooh, uh, this was not a revenge movie, but I watched Annihilation last night. Have you guys heard of that? Like Natalie yeah. Portman, Netflix. I don't know. Mm. Uh, showed up on Netflix Europe, I think, um, recently. Um, I came in contact with it. But uh, it is real weird. I would love to hear other people's... Um, is it revenge no, actually, oh. I don't know why I thought of it just now. It's sci-fi, very heavily sci-fi kind of. Um, I don't know. I don't even want like I don't even know how I would describe it without. Wait, is that the new one where she goes into mm-hmm. that weird mm-hmm. sheen thing to find her husband or something? Yes, okay. and uh, it's. I mean, Natalie Portman is like she's like one of my favorite actresses, so I'll watch anything that she's in. It's a weird movie, and that's saying a lot. Um, but I kind of liked it. More disturbing than enjoyable. Uh, but uh, but yeah, 
I shy away from a lot of like anything that's sort of like too alien. Sometimes when I'm alone, it's late because I'll just be like, oh, I'm just going to have weird nightmares about this later. And eh. um, but eh, it's good. Very good. Um, any final words you want to give to our adoring YouTube audience? Um, YouTube I audience, uh, thank you for adoring us. If you don't adore us, that's cool too. Hey, any, uh, you know, it, warm up to us in your own time. Um, but thanks for being here. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, if you got a lead on a winning laundry ticket, uh, let us know. Email us. Yeah. If you want to, like, maybe just go in with us um, on your winnings, that way some of the pressure is taken off of you. Yeah. Uh, well, I would uh, humbly, humbly request that, that, that you let Roger and I know. Thank All you. Right. See ya.